Back when I was 18, I taught astronomy at a summer program in Boston. Most of us instructors were young and idealistic and knew we knew our content, but not necessarily how to teach. Like the overachievers we are, we went on retreat and brought in senior educators to help us learn about what it meant to teach, not just how to transfer the facts and figures in our heads into somebody else's head, but we wanted to learn how to be educators. One of the first lessons was, you can't teach someone who is hurting. If a learner is hungry or exhausted, afraid or beaten down, if a learner's mind is stuck on what happens outside the classroom, they won't be able to perform well in the classroom. Sometimes, the first step in helping someone learn is to ask, are you okay? Or how can I help? On January 22nd, 2020, two nights after I had returned from the American Astronomical Society meeting, I lay in bed, jet lagged, but unable to sleep. I was doom scrolling Twitter. Those last couple of nights at the meeting, my collaborators and I, my friends and I, we had talked about how glad we were to get out of Hawaii ahead of whatever crazy new flu might be headed our way. How little had we known what was coming. That night, one year ago today, as I chased a still unnamed virus through Twitter hashtags, I learned that a city of 11 million people was being sealed off as it was realized that if the virus was able to escape, China and our world beyond would face a horror like nothing humanity had experienced in 100 years. We now know that those drastic measures saved Wuhan, but came too late to prevent what we now call the coronavirus from escaping to plague so much of the world. As the weeks passed and as the virus and lockdowns propagated around the world, the people in the CosmoQuest astronomy community began to talk less about science and more about their fears. For those of you not familiar with CosmoQuest, we're a platform for learning and doing science, and we focus on citizen science projects that require more training than a lot of the projects you see on platforms like the Zooniverse. We have a smaller community, and our focus is on nurturing the thousands of people willing to spend 45 minutes poring over a single image of Bennu, rather than the millions of people who can contribute to science on much faster moving projects. The COVID pandemic happened at a weird time for our programs. At the end of the American Astronomical Society meeting, we had taken down all our citizen science software to do a complete refresh. Having just made 17 million measurements of rocks and boulders on the asteroid Bennu to find potential landing sites, which we did find, and OSIRIS-REx successfully went down to the surface, well, after measuring those 17 million measurements, everyone was a bit done with mapping. And it was time to do a major upgrade. We were doing a major overhaul from the ground up. And we were at the final steps of testing everything and implementing user requests. And it felt like we should be just a few weeks, maybe a couple months away from being done. If we could just focus. Every conversation fell back to, do you know anyone who is sick? And what are the shortages where you are? Or are you out of toilet paper too? Our development team is currently 100% volunteer. And we had no deadline set by funders. And to be honest, our science teams were first too busy with the beginning of the semester and then too busy trying to figure out homeschooling their kids and remote teaching their classes, they were too busy to be involved in research. In that moment, in February 2020, I had a choice. I could do what I was supposed to do to try to drive my team of volunteers to work on software so people could continue our never-ending efforts to map other worlds, 
or I could do what I did and pull together our community and ask, are you okay? And how can we help? They were not okay. There were three different things going on. Folks were struggling with isolation as they went into work from home and school from home situations. There was a lot of people living alone who suddenly found themselves with their only human connections being the connections they made through the internet. Adulting became hard and people were struggling to get up in the morning, to go to bed at night and to just find the energy to do simple things like shower and put on something other than pajamas. And people were afraid. They were afraid they would get sick and die alone. And by people, I cannot hold myself separate. I may share my home with a husband and an international grad student, but that whole failing to sleep and living in pajamas, I'm just as guilty as anyone else. So we laid out a plan of purposeful compassion in our community of people who learn and do science, we knew no one could function, no one could learn or do science if we were all too busy being angry and afraid. This was the first lesson I had learned, and it was the most important lesson in facing 2020. We were building on a good base, though. In building CosmoQuest, we wanted to occupy the places our community goes anyways. We were live streaming using Twitch and our community interacts through Discord, a chat platform with really solid voice and video capabilities. Earlier decisions to always use the pronoun they when faced with a username of unknown gender had helped us build up a community with an above average number of women and a large openly queer population. Our team of moderators was highly sensitive to the needs of our community members who were struggling with mental illness, who were struggling with mental health issues, and to the conflicts that sometimes arise when folks with autism become extremely intense asking questions. Over the years, we've spent a lot of time talking through how to help things stay healthy while also giving people space to be themselves. We didn't always know the right answer, but we knew how to struggle to find the right enough answer. And we knew that if we all leaned on each other in that huddle of trust, no one would fall. Our foundation was strong, but it wasn't designed to support a community through a pandemic. To get all of us through to the other side, we were going to need to evolve. We knew what was working. People's lives were punctuated by our podcasts and live streams. Early in the history of CosmoQuest, we realized few things are quite as boring as tracing craters. And when you were asking people to spend their spare time doing really boring image analysis, you have to provide them content to keep them interested. The content we provided was our live recording sessions, sessions of recording our various podcasts and watch parties for launches and astronomy-related press conferences and events. We encouraged people to learn in one window and do science in another. With the pandemic, people wanted our voices to keep them company. So in March, we started live streaming on Twitch every Western Hemisphere morning as we tried to give people a reason to get up. Initially, Annie Wilson or I went online to work on software or data visualizations or any of the myriad tasks we could do online as we kept people company easing into their day. We worked. We worked to get our citizen science software up and running and we streamed. And we were honest about how some days it was hard to be excited about the next cool science discovery or electron launch or starship test. It was hard to be excited while it seemed like the world was burning. We were honest 
and we shared our mornings creating what became our community coffee. And it worked. People did better at getting up. With a forum or a chat community like we have on Discord, conversations often get put into channels. We have our live launch coverage channel where folks go to share thoughts and info on the next thing trying to leave Earth's surface. We have photography channels and the inevitable spaces to discuss movies and space art. As 2020 transformed into a dumpster fire, we realized we needed a place where people could shout and admit their fears and anger. It took us a while to figure out what that should look like. And after several iterations and a lot of discussion, we have an opt-in area we call HVAC that is for blowing off steam. We have two channels, one called Screaming Into the Void, where people can just share that thing that is stabbing their heart or keeping them awake at night, and one for deep conversations. These spaces became our community's pressure valves, allowing us to each, in our turn, shout out into the night and know that we aren't alone. We created a place to shout. We created content to escape into. And between shows, we found people would hang out in a voice channel on our community Discord. When I join, I often find people silently working, just knowing we aren't alone, or complaining about their stupid homework or idiotic telecons. We created that place so many of us had in university, that lounge or lobby or study hall where we used to gather as students to work on homework and sometimes play Magic the Gathering. We found that place. And in the evenings, people started escaping into shared escapes. Folks would gather online to play Animal Crossing or Ticket to Ride or Minecraft, sharing their screens on Discord where once they'd cursed Bennu. They'd share a night watching virtual meteor showers on virtual islands and discuss the science and space behind the neat new DIY they got from an owl named Celeste, or the complexities of the redstone calculator they just built. It was a start. But we didn't make it through March before my co-host Annie became the first of us to get sick with what was probably COVID. But it was the United States, so we didn't have enough testing to really know. And here, is where my community reminded me that when we all lean on one another, no one will fall. People stepped forward to help, stepping into host, stepping into simulcast, and stepping in to just make sure nothing got lost. When you create a community built on shared interests and the desire to do good, amazing things can happen. One of our community members, Jillian Rhodes, pointed out that where she was in Pakistan, our morning show was her evening show. And that since we were terrible, since we are terrible at Monday mornings, maybe she could use her Monday evenings to do an art and astronomy focused community coffee. Week by week, she brought on guests ranging from a French poet to an American astronaut to discuss science in a way only an artist can do it. Jillian is a dancer and choreographer professionally. And on the days she didn't have guests, she would dance science, putting into motion that concepts of comets passing too close to the sun or the solstice bringing a change to the seasons. Jillian is taking this month off to focus on work related to an artist's grant she received. But when she comes back February 8, her show is being rebranded Steam Cafe and will become a new YouTube series. I know it is the reason I want to get up on Monday mornings. I want to watch live as she mixes art and science to put beauty onto the internet. When Annie got sick, People like Jillian stepped forward, making it clear that what we do matters and making it clear that as a community, they would help me keep doing these things that matter. 
It was also a reminder, though, that we needed to aggressively check in on one another. We made it clear to folks that if they lived alone, they were welcome to give me or another member of our core team of staff and volunteers their contact info. And we'd check in on them as needed. And there have been people who needed us to check in. Thanks to the internet, there was food that magically appeared on doorsteps when people needed it. And, and there was one person who died, whose body was more quickly found because one day he didn't appear at the usual time. But he'd given us his brother's phone number and we made the call he knew we'd make. It was a long year. It was a long year and almost every stream and gathering ended with the same words and the same promise. Stay inside if you can. Wear a mask if you can't. Wash your hands and know that we'll get through this together. We will see you on the other side. We learned how to survive. As winter turned into spring, it became clear that what we were facing in North America and in much of the EU and UK wasn't going to get better without a vaccine. Everyone was missing the simple pleasures of going out. Vacations were canceled, conferences were canceled, science fiction and fantasy cons canceled. Everything was just canceled. So we started looking for ways to fill in the gaps. In July, we held a three-day virtual science, science fiction, and science art convention, complete with costumes and a nerdy vendor room. This wasn't just another virtual event held in Zoom. A bunch of us were regular attendees of the massive Dragon Con event that is held in Atlanta, Georgia every year. This event knows that sometimes exhaustion hits or the need to make a costume change arises. But people don't want to miss anything. Dragon Con's answer is to take over all the event hotels, hotel TV stations, and broadcast Dragon Con TV, a channel that showcases the best events and fills the space between events with music videos, skits, and just plain silliness. Let's take a look at some of their examples. There's just two hotels between us, but a million dead pools. Hello from the panel line. I didn't get here quite in time. I'm outside the high end on the Baker Street side. Who do so many people read the Hitchhiker's Guide? Hi, I'm standing outside. Hey, 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 just think while you've been writing fanfic about nerve herders and the dirty slave girls in the world, you could have been getting down to this Sith beat. This cosplayer Han brought his new girlfriend. She's like, me so no like it. But I'm just gonna shake into the Ewok over there with the hella good hair. Won't you come on over, baby? We can yell, nub, nub. In putting together our own Cosmoquesticon, this was what we tried to create, and we partnered it with virtual hangout spaces, shared game rooms, and opportunities to meet guests. For those three days, we heard laughter. And when it was over, my volunteers told me that in October, we'd be holding a bigger and better event, and this time it would include a building of a solar system scale model in Minecraft. 
And in October, we held a hangout-a-thon for 36 hours, an event that was part fundraiser, but mostly it was a chance for everyone to come together, for everyone to acknowledge that 2020 was terrible and to channel all our hopes and fears and emotion into building a shared solar system in Minecraft. When we started CosmoQuest in 2012, I had no idea how it would evolve over the years. We knew that we wanted to be a place where people learn and do science. We knew that as a volunteer project that lives online, we were going to attract a lot of people who love video games and giving back to their communities. Over the years, we always had knots of people who would organize their CosmoQuest friends for this community activity or that online event. Starting in 2017, we even had our own CosmoQuest Extra Life team. For those of you not familiar, Extra Life is a program that recruits people online to play video games for some marathon period of time to raise money for children's hospitals. Doing good, playing online. This was totally our jam. And in 2020, it turned out that we all had a lot of things we needed to work out. I mentioned earlier that one of our community members died. It wasn't COVID. He was simply an older man who lived alone and was in poor health. His username was Paranor001, and in real life, he was a former theater actor named Tim Hawkins. He was one of our moderators, one of our volunteer show producers. He was the one getting up every Monday to engineer Jillian's art and science show. He was a constant in our Discord server. He was someone who struggled hard with his own demons and helped all of us better understand mental health issues. He was a broken and beautiful human who pushed all of us to be better as he pushed himself to be better. Paranor was the one who gave birth to the idea of building a scale model of the solar system in Minecraft as an educational activity that would bring new people into our community and also give people a place to creatively work out all their pent-up pandemic emotions. Tim died three weeks before the Hangout-a-thon and that build of the solar system he imagined. In that build, we didn't just build the skies above. We also built a telescope and rockets and a space shuttle that all filled the world below. And everywhere, we put memorials to Tim. We even blew up our old enemy, Bennu, and, and we grieved. We grieved what 2020 had taken from us. To be entirely honest, <laughs> the first time I tried Minecraft was the week before Tim died. He begged and bullied me, as only a friend can, into joining him and several other community members in a server they'd set up to hang out on. I was a total noob, not to be trusted to remember to eat in-game or to correctly light things up to prevent the spawning of creepers. But Tim knew that in the absence of real-world contact, this virtual world could offer us a place to gather in a psychologically important way, where we could see each other and with our virtual bodies be together in virtual person. And this is actually something that has been explored with research in Second Life, where it was found that the same brain reactions we have to touch and gesture in the real world are found in the virtual world that the same issues of self-confidence in our appearance cross from the clothes we wear to work to the avatar we wear online. In Minecraft, our community has built a shared table for an imagined holiday meal. Our community has held a fireworks display to celebrate the new year. Our community found community as they met avatar to avatar, to find the togetherness they couldn't find person to person. Tim was right. 
we needed Minecraft to build the world we missed in this weird pandemic-filled reality. 2020 was a weird year. As one of those people with a compromised immune system that you hear about, I've only left my home three times for reasons other than regular medical appointments. Once I had to go to the bank to sign papers, and twice I had to go to the vet because my dog, who keeps trying to interrupt beside me, my dog is not very bright and needed to first get stitches put in his ear and then get them taken back out. 2020 should be a year I look back on as horrifying and terrible. But the truth is, one year ago, I made a choice to do what was right for the people of my community instead of doing what was expected of by my career. For 12 months, I focused on the questions. Are you okay? And how can I help? When I look back on 2020, what I see are the people who I've gotten to know better the programs we created as we sought to bring more content and the spaces we created to let the community grow. And the weird thing is, what we did, because it was right, may have changed the course of our programs forever. In December, I got a phone call from Juan Havara, a media professional I know from the early days of podcasting, when he'd have me on his bilingual bilingual technocaster show to talk astronomy to English and Spanish-speaking audiences. Over the years, we'd kept in touch off and on, and that December day, he asked me a question I never expected to hear. He asked if we wanted to be on TV. His organization, Now Media, had just purchased Houston's Channel 21, and he wanted science content and wanted to know if we'd be willing to produce our daily space news show to run after the nightly news, with astronomy cast to run after. For a year, we'd been working to improve our content and our production so that we could be there for people, so they could learn astronomy while they worked from home. And now, as of January 4, our podcasts have ionized to television, and if all goes well, a year from now, our media productions will be paying for our science. This was not in the plans, but I'll take it. It's a year later. Where I am in the U.S., the pandemic continues at a rate of 200 cases a day in my rural Illinois county. We have a new president, and I can't tell you how much of a relief that is but we are still months away from a possible return to normalcy. But we're okay. And last week, someone asked, when will, be, when will we be able to start mapping again? And next week? Next week, we will go back to programming, to testing and relaunching our science. Because people are in a place where they can they can learn and do science again. And we will get through this together. And someday, in the real world, we know we will see one another again on the other side. Thank you.